for the zero cost caller, this involves holding the underlying. So there will be a long underlying position. And then there will also be a long put. Okay, at a lower strike. Okay, then the call. And you will there will be a short call position. Okay, with a higher strike price. So when we look at the payoff diagram, it will look similar to a bull spread where you have a maximum profit, maximum loss, and also a break even price. The only difference between the zero cost caller and the long underlying uh, and the bull spread is that uh, for zero cost caller, we own the underlying, but for the bull spread, the, we don't not, we just hold the call options. Okay, and uh, take note that in this case for zero cost, it means that the premium for the put and call are the same. So they offset each other. So the cost net cost is zero. Now let's look at this example where the holder of a stock that's worth $40 is considering placing a collar on it. So there's a put with an exercise of $37 that costs $6 premium. And there's a call option with the same premium that will have an exercise price of $48. So calculate the value of the position at expiration and the profit under the following outcomes. So if the price of the stock at expiration is $54, $46, and $31. So first off, we construct the strategy. So there will be a long stock position. Okay, and then we long put at the lower strike price, which in this case is $37. And then we will short the call position, the call option at the higher strike of 48 so at the initial point time zero so the stock the long stock is worth 40 so that's an asset we buy the put so there's an asset worth six there and then we of course uh, short or we sell the call option so that's a liability so initially that's uh, also six dollars it seems it has the same premium so this is why we call it zero cost so the initial value of the zero cost caller would be 40 which is the value of the the price of the stock itself now in scenario A, if the stock price at expiration is 54, so the stock price will then go from 40 to 54. The put option cannot be exercised because it's uh, the price is above the exercise price. But the short call position can be exercised. So the payoff is uh, 54 minus 48. And this is a liability to us. So that's a negative 6. So in this case, the value of the cover, the zero cost caller will be 48. So the gain, okay, will be 48 minus 40. So that's $8. Now in the in scenario B, if the spot price is 46, so it goes from 40 to 46, the long put position, okay, still uh, cannot be exercised. Okay, and the short call position, okay, cannot be exercised at this point. So the value of the caller is just 46. So in this case, the gain will be 46 minus 40. So there will be a gain of uh, $6 there. Okay, and for scenario C, so if the spot price is 31. So the stock price drops from 40 to 31. Now the put, the put option can be exercised. So the payoff is 37 minus 31, that's $6. And then the call option cannot be exercised. So the value of the call, uh, the caller is 37. So the gain is 37 minus 40. So we only lose $3. The profit is maximum for the caller when the spot price is above the strike of the call, which is $48 in this case. So all we need to do is just take a price that's higher than 48. So for example, I could take maybe uh, $60. So the stock, if the stock price goes up to 60, then the put option is out of money, so that's zero. But the short call will be in the money, so the payoff will be 60 minus 48, but that's a short position, so that's negative. So that's negative 12. So the value of the caller will be back to $48, which is the call, uh, this exercise price of the call. So in this case, the gain, the maximum gain will be 48 minus 40. So that's $8. Okay, so that's your maximum profit. For the caller strategy, the loss is maximum when the spot price is below the strike of the put option, which is 37. So we can take any price below 37. Okay, so I could take something like $20, for example. 
Okay, so if the stock price drops to 20, we can exercise the put option. So we get 37 minus 20. So that's $17. The call option is out of the money. So we have 37 as the value of the caller. So the gain is 37 minus 40. So that's negative 3. Okay, so your maximum loss is $3. The break even price is between the two strike prices. So we denote it as SB, okay, for the break even price. And take note that this is above the put option, okay, uh, it's above the strike of the put and it's below the strike of the call option. So in this case, both options cannot be exercised, okay. So in other words, here, okay, the assuming this is a stock price, okay, uh, which is the break even price, and for in this at this spot, both options cannot be exercised. So the value of the caller is just as the spot break even price, so the gain is a difference in the value of the break even price and the initial value which is 40 and by definition we should have a gain of zero so the break even price is 40 dollars okay which is the uh, initial value of the stock itself